Okay, so this is the last section in chapter 17, and this is probably one of the most important uh, sections because uh, in the past we've always had at least one, well, we usually have one question coming from this section either in the term exam or in the final, sometimes both. Okay, and the problem involves rolling or sliding of a disc or cylinder can be on a horizontal surface or an incline. So uh, I would say stress on this part. This is one of the most important sections. So we look at general planar motion where we do not constrain the motion to be uh, translational or uh, rotation about an axis can rotate as well as translate. So again the same caricature, uh, a rigid body is acted upon by multiple forces, G is the center of mass and previously we have seen the center of mass can only rotate about an axis or only tra only translate. Here we are looking at the movement which involves translation as well as rotation. So G translates plus rotates. So when you are analyzing something like this, uh, the equations are pretty much the same equations of motion. So that is actually the free body diagram because it doesn't have any, uh, it's, it's the body is free in the air and it's replaced by all forces. So equations of motion are, well there are two sets just like the previous section. Fx equals mass times acceleration, the x direction. I'm uh, going to assume that we are looking at the system in the x y frame but if it's empty then you got to replace the x and y with an empty. So f x equals mass times a g x, f y equals mass times a g y and the last equation is the same as before it's m g equals i g alpha. So that's set number one you can use that set or there's another set of equations. The first two equations remain the same However, third one, uh, we can take moments about any point on the body. So let's say P is some random point. And we want to take moments about point P. Okay. The moment about point P consists of two things. One is IG alpha. I'm sort of uh, uh, violating the vectors here. I'm writing IG alpha with a vector but the left side I'm not writing as a vector. The, the reason I'm doing that well, let me just write it as IG alpha. Uh, you got to put the right sign there. So counterclockwise I take as positive, uh, clockwise negative. So you want to put the right sign. And then this is actually a, vi a violation of writing equations. I write uh, RG cross P cross MAG. So I wrote, although I wrote it down this way, you got to use the magnitude in this equation. Because it doesn't make sense to take a vector, vector, so vector scalar, scalar. So maybe a, a better way to write it is this. Eventually, you look at the all these vectors will be in the k direction because the moments are about uh, they're all planar moments, right? So find the acceleration, cross it with the vector from p to g, not g to p. <coughs> So the most important thing is do not use 
don't don't write one, two, three, four, because this looks different from this. Doesn't mean that this equation is different from that. This equations are the same. Uh, the point about which we take moments differ. That does not mean that the equations are unique equations. They are the same equations. So use either set one, set two. Use either set one or set two. So this is especially important if you are figuring out the unknowns when you have some parts problems will have four unknowns and the question is how can you generate four equations so the common mistake i see is people will take one equation two equations three equations four equations there are four equations for four unknowns and i can solve for four unknowns that is not true because this equation and this equation are the same equation so there are really three equations there just written different ways so do not use that equation as the fourth equation. And it will be clear when we solve problems. We'll have problems where we have four unknowns and we, you'll see that I'll use something else other than uh, those three equations to solve the problem. Okay, so that is uh, everything we need to know to solve problems. Let's see how to apply this on uh, a problem involving uh, rolling and sliding. Okay, so a 20 kg wheel has a radius of 0 0.1 meters. The coefficient of static and kinetic friction is 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 respectively. The force is given as 300 newtons. The acceleration of, so we could find the acceleration of the center of mass. So AG is unknown and gravity is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so uh, I believe you've learned about coefficient of static and kinetic friction in statics. So coefficient of static friction is uh, basically if there is an object and it's at rest, if I'm applying a force, uh, the amount of force, so clearly there's a normal force and there's a force of friction which prevents me from pushing this and that force of friction is uh, the coefficient of friction times n. So to get something to move, to move, uh, mu times n, in this case mu is the coefficient of static friction is what you got to use. The force you require to move uh, is equal to the coefficient of static friction times n. Let me write that down. So static and kinetic friction coefficient. Static is given as mu s typically and mu k is the uh, kinetic friction. So if there's an object at rest, you apply a force F, it's the normal force. mg n and so there's going to be a force of friction to the left because the force f external force is to the right so that force is mu s n or that's equal to mu s since n is mg mu s mg so when the force f is greater than or equal to mu s mg the block will the mass will start or initiate motion. So until the force is less than mu s n, mg, it's not going to move. So example, if you put mu s equals 0.3, m equals 1, g equals 10, then that says that the force to initiate motion is has to be greater than 0.3 times 10, so 3 newtons. So unless the force is 3 newtons, the block will not move. Now, once it starts, this is at rest. So once it starts moving, 
let's say that the block is moving to the right, the force you require to sustain movement is given by mu k times n, where mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction. So to sustain motion, we need F minus mu k n, which is mu k mg. So mu k mg equals m a. If you put a equals zero, then you see that the force is mu k mg. And uh, typically mu k is, uh, usually it's less than mu s. So let's say that mu k is 0.2, which is less than 0.3, then f is uh, two newtons. So the key, what I'm trying to, the key thing which I'm trying to make clear is the force you need to initiate movement, motion is that, and the force you need to sustain motion is two, which means that to initiate motion, you need a bigger force, uh, but to sustain mo motion, once it starts moving is less, it's two Newton meters. So uh, if you're pushing this, I need to put a la large amount of force, so it starts moving, but once it starts moving, the force of friction reduces because there's a different coefficient, uh, which is, preventing you from moving. And so that's the difference between these two coefficients. This is something we should be using in this problem. And I expect that you would have learned about this in more detail in statics. Did you learn about this in statics? Yes, this was the revision. Okay, so uh, given that, let's move on to the problem. We are asked to find the acceleration when you're given the static and kinetic friction coefficient and capital F is the force acting to the right. Okay, now, this problem is, first of all, it's a rigid body. It's a disk, you're given the radius, uh, so it's a rigid body. This, the disk rotates as well as moves to the right. So G, well, the disk is rotating, clearly, and it's moving to the right because of the force. So it is a general planar motion problem, and so you have to use those equations which I wrote down. So first thing I'll do is draw a free body diagram and show all the forces. Mg, N, F, the friction force will act in a way so that it's preventing movement, so let's call FF to be the friction force. Okay, so let's set up the equations of motion. Okay, and so there's a very, very specific way of solving this problem, okay? And you have to use this particular method. First of all, we are not sure if that disk is rolling or it's sliding. We do not know that. Uh, the fact if the rolling whether it's rolling or sliding depends on the the force f it depends on the coefficient of static and kinetic friction uh, it also depends on the geometry of the object so we do not know that so always if you see a problem like this and you're not told that the disk is rolling or sliding you got to start assuming that the disk is rolling we'll solve the problem assuming it's rolling We'll check the condition for rolling, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, write it down once I'm come to that point uh, where I'm so figuring out if it's rolling or not. And then if we if we check if that assumption is incorrect, then we will change our assumption. It's not rolling; it's sliding, and redo the problem. So always assume rolling, check assumptions. Uh, assumptions are true; you're good. Assumption not are not good that it is not rolling. Assume it's sliding. Solve the problem. And we stop. So the way we do it. Assume disk is rolling. Okay, you have to do this if you're not given. 
unless of course I say it's sliding. Assume it's disk is rolling. Write equations of motion. So f x equals m a g x. So the force in the x direction. Let's assume that this is x. The right side. horizontal is x, vertical is y. So f minus the friction force, which is acting in negative x, equals mass times a g. Uh, so I'll call that a g because I know that the the disk can only have acceleration in the x direction. There's no acceleration in the y direction. If it had, it'll fly off the ground. So I just write it as a g. Next, f y equals m a g y. The force in the y direction is n, acting in the positive y. M g in the negative y equals zero because there's no acceleration in the y direction. And then the third equation. Uh, we can write well, m g equals i g alpha. You could also write a different equation for the third one. You could write moment about point A. Okay, but I'll defer that for later. Uh, let me just do this equation and solve. So, the net moment about G. Uh, capital F, m g and n. All of these these three forces pass through G. So the contributions into those forces is zero. The only force which is contributing to a moment is the friction force times the moment arm from point of application, which I called A here, to G. So that's R. And if you want to take moments about G, the force of friction, which is applied this way, is going to cause a clockwise torque. So negative is the sign uh, equals. I g times alpha. Now you got to assume uh, the correct sign. So if the disk is moving to the right with acceleration of a g, okay, let's do one thing. Let's just assume that to be. So it's, this is actually not going to be consistent, but that's fine. So let's assume that it's alpha. Like what we always do, uh, we assume that a g is to the right, right, positive. So uh, it's going to be plus i g alpha. Okay. Uh, we assume alpha, but you see that that's negative. Means alpha, our assumed direction is incorrect, and the <coughs> disk actually, uh, the angular axis is actually clockwise. That's fine. Uh, it's okay if you keep it this way because it actually tells you the right sign. So uh, let's try to identify the unknowns. Remember, we are trying to solve for a g. The friction force is unknown. The normal force, the way I've set it up, is unknown. Now you can say it's equal to m g, but the way I've set it up right now it is unknown. So the unknowns are a g. Alpha friction force and normal force, but we have only three equations: one, two, three. So, three equations four unknowns. You cannot solve for four unknowns using three equations. So, we need a, a fourth equation to solve this. And that fourth equation comes from not from Newton's laws, which are the three equations. It comes from kinematics. Uh, if the disk is rolling, then the point A, which is the point of contact, <coughs> does not move or slip. So A G equals R times alpha. So I, there is a slight inconsistency if I write it this way, because I assume alpha to be counterclockwise should actually be negative, because a. So if alpha is this way, then that will be a g is to the left, but a g is assumed to be to the right. So I need to put the negative r alpha to make it consistent. If I assume alpha to be clockwise, then so if I assume alpha to be this way, then the change would be this would be positive. And this will be uh, negative. But 
But this is fine the way it is. Do you give the same answer as you would get if you put it <laughs> as uh, clockwise? So that's our fourth equation. So now we can solve for the four unknowns using the four equations. One thing to note is the friction force is not mu k m or mu s m. And normally we write the friction force for a sliding block to be uh, mu k n. Mu k is the equation of kinetic friction. And that's not true because the friction force doesn't have to be mu k n when it is rolling. Because yeah, mu k n, that coefficient of friction is only true if the block is sliding. It's not an assumption. Uh, we always use it for a sliding block and not for a rolling disk. So friction force is an unknown. So what we can do is solve for the four unknowns. So solving the four unknowns. I get F friction is 100 newtons. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm finding the friction force and not AG is because now I've got to check if the assumption is true. So AG is well, I could solve for four unknowns, but before I, before I stick with the rolling assumption, let me check if it's slipping or uh, rolling. So the condition for rolling to be true is that the friction force is less than mu s times the normal force. In this case, Normal force is mg, right? mg is the normal force from equation number two. So the friction force is 100, and uh, mu s, you're given, it is, is 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 mass is 20, and gravity is 10. So if you put that in, we get 100 less than Sixty. Okay, that's in, that's not true. What that means is our assumption that the disk is rolling is untrue. So the disk is so F F F. The friction force is greater than mu s n, right? Because 100 is, turns out to be greater than 60. So we can say that the disk is slipping. It's not rolling. So again, remember, what is mu s n? It's the force needed to get something to start motion. Uh, and if the force of friction is greater than that, then it's clearly going to slip because the force is exceeding the force needed to get this thing to move. So disk is slipping. Uh, what that means is we got to resolve this whole problem, but assume it is slipping. <clears throat> so now we start solving it again. Disk is slipping. Okay, the, the good news is that you don't have to do too many uh, calculations again. Uh, Newton's laws are always true. So equations one, two, and three are still true for an object which is slipping. The rolling assumption or the slipping assumption does not show up in those three equations. So one, two, and three are still true. The so the fourth equation, Ag equals minus R alpha, however, is not true. And it's not true because this point A is not at rest. It is slipping. It's moving with a velocity to the right. So when that's true, when the disk is slipping, uh, the fourth equation is actually the equation which comes from friction, which is F 
F, the friction force is mu k times n or mu k, in this case mu k times mg. So that's the, the equation you got to use, the fourth equation you got to use for slipping. Now, let me call that 4b. So now what we do is solve for FF, AG, alpha, and N from 1, 2, 3. And the fourth equation now is 4B because that's the slipping condition. So if you solve for, well, four equations, again, four unknowns, uh, the ones which I wrote down, you can solve for those four unknowns. Uh, the, the values are FF equals 40 newtons, AG equals 13 meters per second square. Alpha is not asked, but it comes out to be minus 40 radians per second square. It's negative because we assumed it to be counterclockwise. It's actually clockwise. And then normal force is 200. I don't think it's, uh, you can try it if you want. Normal force is basically this 200. So we were after the acceleration, which is right here. Yeah. Yeah, the rolling assumption is AG equals R alpha. And what that means is uh, if So the derivation for the rolling assumption is comes this way. Uh, if this is, let's say that the disk is rolling, let's look at what happens to uh, this line as it translates. So let's say that after some time, the disk is here. And so in the process, it has rolled to the right by an angle of theta. Okay. So this distance covered is S, but that's the same, since this point is not slipping, not slipping, the arc length, this arc length, is the same as the distance covered, because think of, if you had put a string over here, and you pull the string, then it would undrag by this distance, and the distance moved by the block would be the same distance you want. Unravel from the clock. So that S equals R times theta. And so if you differentiate with respect to time twice, that expression you get uh, D square S DT square, which is the acceleration equals R times second derivative of theta is going to be alpha. And that's how you get it. That, that's, that's, what's that? It was negative because here I assumed it to be clockwise. So in that case, this is consistent. A is going to be to the right, and alpha is, uh, is well, I assumed it in the right direction. In this case, in the first here, I assumed it to be counterclockwise. And that's why there's a negative sign, because when I put alpha with a, let's say that alpha is, so what do you expect alpha to be? It's supposed to be negative five, so, because it's negative because when you actually solve this, it comes out to be the clockwise direction. So when you put that alpha with the right sign in that equation 4, AG will be positive R alpha because alpha is negative. And so AG is positive, and our convention is AG is to the right, the positive x direction. That's the right sign for AG, and that's why I need to put alpha, just to make it uh, come out right. So you're saying it's moving this way. It's moving to the right. So the alpha is inconsistent with the AG direction, right? If I move the disk this way, then AG would be moving that way. And to make that thing consistent, I need to assume, I need to put a negative sign. Because alpha is not this way, but it's that way. Yes, so if, if you, yeah, if you want to draw alpha this way, then I would just write that as AG equals R times alpha, and there would be no negative sign. I think the book does it that way, AG equals positive R alpha, where they assume alpha to be clockwise. Okay, so this is uh, the most involved the problem can get. 
How would that be a good example? The question is how long would that take us to solve since we only have 50 minutes? Uh, okay, so if you no notice this carefully, I have actually reused three equations. And this equation shows up. Yeah, so a uh, uh, more realistic scenario is I tell you it's slipping, or I tell you it's rolling, okay, so or I make you share. That, that's what I can expect in the term exam because we just have 15 minutes. But in the final exam, where you have more time, you actually get 25 minutes every four, four question. You can expect to have a question like this where you ask to solve the whole thing. Of course, we infuse the points. Uh, but, but I would say you should study this whole thing. This is one ideal example of you start rolling with the rolling assumption doesn't come out true, then you ask, assume it's slipping and solve the problem. Uh, there's another problem in the book. Uh, I think it's a problem where the disk has a movement arm applied to it. Like it's of F this M, and you also have to go through the same procedure where it's assume rolling, it slips, and then solve it. So solve that problem, solve this problem. There are very few problems which have uh, both these features. Uh, most problems in the book, what happens is when you solve it, you come here and you check that it is true, and you stop. You do not go to slipping because it's true. Okay, this is, as I said, very important. Please study. There are only so many questions in the book. Uh, I have one here. Do later. That's another example where you just change the direction of force, so it'll change moments. Uh, there's one in which the disk is going on an inclined plane. Um, there's only so many. So I would recommend solving all those problems. Pretty much there are five or six questions in the book. Do not, uh, when you solve this, do not see the solution. Just try to solve it yourself and get more practice. Um, there's nothing surprising over here. It's just a recipe. You just have to do the same thing again and again. Okay, any, any questions? You can solve another problem so it'll make it more clear. Um, let's see. Okay, here is another problem on, let's see if we can solve this. The 20 kg sphere rolls down an inclined plane without slipping. So that's another way we can give you a question. We are specifically telling you it is rolling without slipping. So you do not need to uh, solve the slipping part because it is given to you. It's rolling without slipping. Determine the angular acceleration of the sphere and the acceleration of, the, of its mass center. So draw a free body diagram. Okay, uh, you are, you'll be told this in the exam, so don't worry about it. The inertia of a sphere is 2 divided by 5 m r square. So that'll be given to you, don't worry about remembering that. Is that right? 2 by 5. Yeah. Okay, so we can assume that I mean, if you like, you can assume okay, x to the right or along the plane upwards. And I'm just doing that because that way I'm consistent. x plus y gives me k when I take the right-hand rule. So then fx equals mass times a g in the x direction, fy equals m a g y and moment about g equals i g alpha. Okay, so the question asks you to solve for alpha. Okay, can you solve for alpha and fold the answer? I'm, I'm going to help you a little bit, but try to solve it yourself. Set up the equations. Set up the three equations. 
And then the fourth equation would be, it's from kinematics. If you assume alpha to be counterclockwise and Ag uh, to be, well, let's assume it to be this way, downwards, then Ag is simply R times alpha because now the direction is consistent. Ag is to the downwards and alpha is counterclockwise. That will give me Ag in the direction I've shown. Okay, so write those equations and then I'll, I'll do it and then we can check the answers. So try to write the answers. I'll put the equations down, and you can check with uh, with me. So. Does that agree with what you, what you wrote down? Okay, so first equation, uh, all the forces in the positive x direction are, put, are have a positive sign, so friction force is in the positive x direction, mg sin theta is in the negative x direction, and I need to put a negative sign here because um, the acceleration there I've shown is to be in the, is downwards. It's not in the positive x direction. N minus mg cos theta is self-explanatory. It's the force uh, equation in the y direction. Uh, the moment equation, the only moment which is contributing here is the moment about the friction force because all other forces, well, in this case, the two forces, mg and n pass through g. So FF cross R is the force, uh, sorry, the moment due to friction force. And about g, if you see the way it's applied, it's going to create a counterclockwise torque. So it's positive. And the sign of alpha is positive because alpha is assumed to be counterclockwise, so I put it as a positive sign. And finally, Ag equals R alpha. So the unknowns are N. The friction force, Ag and alpha, so four equations, one. Did anybody solve for alpha? So this equation, can't read that equation. What you have to do is uh, put Ag plus R alpha here, and then from these two equations, eliminate F whatever you want. Anybody got the answer? Okay, so let me just, well, 
Okay, let's just try to solve this. FF minus MG sine theta is minus M R alpha. So I just put in the value for the equation four in equation one. And what I need to now do is sub in the value for friction force from one. From three. So two fifth M R alpha minus M G sine theta is minus M R alpha. And so if I uh, move things around, 7 divided by 5 m r alpha is mg sine theta. So alpha is g sine theta 5 by 7. So 5, 7, 9.81. Sine theta is half, 30 is half. And so alpha is. get 3.5 radians per second squared. So I, I open the poll. Uh, feel free to enter any answer you want. I just want to give credit for attending. You can, you can enter any, any answer. It doesn't matter. What's the radius again? Say the question again. What's the radius again? The radius is. 0.15. Did I miss it? I think I missed it. it. Should be divided by r. So point. This should be divided by 0.15. Two point three three. No, sorry. 0.15 should be 23. Point. Sorry. Should be 23. Point. 3.6. So that's answer. Okay. So uh, what we'll do is, so here's an exercise you can do. Uh, what I 